guys, happy Vlogtober day 25. I'm just here sipping on my cinnamon apple spice tea from Celestial Seasonings with a little bit of the uh, cinnamon uh, sweet leaf stevia drops that I love so much. Oh, it's so good. This tea, I'm, I'm just really enjoying these as a wet, as a uh, whistle wetter in the morning uh, before my Bustello. Oh, just really enjoying them. I can't believe October is just like whizzing by so quickly. Um, it's early morning here and I'm getting ready. I thought I'd just pop on here and chit chat with you guys a little bit. Um, as you can tell probably from the title of the thumbnail today, I'm gonna be talking about why I don't use vitamin C serums. Um, the reason I'm making a video on this is because I think since my very first YouTube video, oh, slightly a, a few days, a few days in a year ago, um, I continue to get questions all the time about can I recommend a vitamin C serum? What are my thoughts on vitamin C? Is this particular brand of a vitamin C serum good? Can I please review this vitamin C serum? And I never really do that. And um, I've touched on some of the reasons why in earlier videos, but I figured I'd just make a, a vitamin C serum specific why I don't bother video <laughs> to just kind of be able to guide you guys into uh, just kind of my line of thinking with the vitamin C serum and why I just why I just don't go there. So stick around if that interests you. Um, but isn't Totoro so cute here? If you guys if you guys ha don't have one of these, ugh, it will totally perk up your lifestyle. I feel as though once I found my Totoro mug, I really was done on the search for mugs, honestly. I, I just don't even look anymore. All right, but anyways, Vitamin C, okay, I think we're all like, uh, to, to some extent, fairly familiar with vitamin C as a vitamin, and it's commonly known as, uh, the other name for vitamin C is ascorbic acid. It's abundant in you know, citrus fruits, leafy green vegetables like spinach that you always see me chowing down on, um, one of my favorites. You know, it's, um, completely absorbed in our small intestine as a vitamin. And vitamin C or ascorbic acid is critical for many, many biologic processes in the human body. And as far as oral vitamin C, um, like I said, it's absorbed in the small intestine and in doses of 100 milligrams um, uh, per day. Anything superseding that orally um, is likely to just be excreted by your kidneys into your urine. So, um, you know, I don't know what the the nutritionists and dietitians and um, registered dietitians recommend as far as vitamin C supplementation, but um, I was sort of always taught that so long as you're not vitamin C deficient for whatever reason, you don't have any problems with absorption in your small intestine. Uh, eating a balanced diet with fruits and vegetables, there's really no, no need to take a, a vitamin C supplement because you're probably just making your urine a little on the pricey side. Vitamin C is most relevant to skin physiology as far as uh, it is a critical um, cofactor in collagen synthesis and elastin synthesis, which collagen and elastin are parts of our um, skin structure, kind of hold um, a little bit of water, give the skin support, and as we age, those um, components become damaged with time and uh, you know can lead to wrinkles and skin sagging, decreased elasticity and uh, also, you know, just impair skin function and uh, impair overall skin health as, as they become damaged. So vitamin C is critical for generation of those components and it's also um, vital in combating reactive oxygen species that are generated from ultraviolet light that we're exposed to in our environment, uh, going outdoors from inadequate sun protection and inadequate um, inadequate use of sunscreen. Um, vitamin C really comes into play in, 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 in fighting some of those free radicals, which free radicals are um, damaging oxygen um, molecules that uh, can damage the DNA of our skin cells and set the stage for not only aging and, and those sorts of cosmetic concerns, but skin cancers, okay? So vitamin C obviously is of interest um, and it plays a huge pivotal role in skin biology. It's actually the most efficient efficient antioxidant in the skin as far as what, what we generate. It functions not only um, in the extracellular or outside of the cells uh, in that space, it functions very well in that compartment, kind of 
doing its thing, functioning as a cofactor, combating free radicals, but it also gets into cells and functions within cells as well. So it's very efficient as an antioxidant and very efficient in the skin. We know that after um, exposure to ultraviolet light, however, that our vitamin C levels within our skin are depleted by that ultraviolet light exposure. Not only are they depleted, but also some of the transporters that help get the vitamin C to different compartments within the skin are also depleted with ultraviolet light exposure. And it's because of its role in collagen production and its ability to eliminate these reactive oxygen species that vitamin C is obviously, you know, of hot interest as a potential therapy for combating the effects of aging and um, potentially skin cancer prevention. And, and truthfully speaking, in laboratory studies, that is in cells in a dish and models of skin, not actual people, not actual humans, but in, in laboratory studies, there's some good evidence that adding vitamin C to cells in a dish or, or skin models helps boost collagen production and helps uh, the cells make, you know, helps the cells uh, hold on to some of their own vitamin C when exposed to ultraviolet light um, and that sort of thing. So there's there's pretty good, there's a lot of good evidence from lab studies of adding vitamin C and it being protective, okay? So that's compelling. And so hypothetically speaking, adding vitamin C to your skincare products could do the same thing for your skin, right? However, the data for people really is just not there yet, okay? And what I mean by that are rigorous, um, blinded, uh, placebo-controlled, clinical trials with topical vitamin C, okay? There are a few very, very small studies using formulations of vitamin C in serums and in cosmeceuticals to look at some of these things in people. And, you know, some of the studies do show, you know, a subtle improvement in things like wrinkling, fine lines. However, the studies have many limitations. There, a lot of times their methods are somewhat, sub, their endpoints, excuse me, are somewhat subjective. They're not all standardized in the same manner. The endpoints are not all the same. They're not appropriately controlled. And they're not well powered, meaning there aren't enough people in the studies to say, is this just a bias or is this something that is reproducible to a larger group of people? They're compelling and, and insightful, but they're not, um, you know, the kind of studies that you'd like to see to, to really um, make an argument for, for these things. And furthermore, one study, which actually was fairly well powered, uh, showed that there was no statistical difference between people who, who were using um, topical vitamin C serum and a topical placebo serum. There was really absolutely no difference in their endpoints as far as, uh, um, you know, photo aging. And furthermore, the overriding concern is that vitamin C or ascorbic acid topically is incredibly unstable, okay? I mean, it's very, very unstable. Functions very, very well in our body. You know, we are able to get it from our foods. We're able to assimilate it into our tissues, um, bearing in mind you're otherwise healthy. But putting it on the skin, I mean, it, it really, the concern is that it degrades very, very quickly and is unlikely to be helpful, okay? And so this has uh, caused, this has led people to try and chemically modify vitamin C to make it more stable in these serums. But it's unclear how much, if any, remains intact um, or can even penetrate into the skin to begin to have biologically relevant outcomes for you. And so, you know, some modifications have been made on vitamin C to potentially overcome this, sh this, this part about it. So there's ascorbyl palmitate, ascorbyl tetraiso, tetraisopalmitate, um, and mass magnesium uh, derivatives of vitamin C. Those are all theoretically more stable. Also, the concentration of the vitamin C matters. Uh, apparently, concentrations over 20%, you kind of max out any ability, at least in the laboratory studies, to activating the enzyme, you sort of supersede that. For the body to even use uh, vitamin C, it has to be in the um, L-ascorbic acid form. So I suppose, you know, if you were asking me, 
what things to look for in a vitamin C serum, given what we know from just the laboratory studies. I would imagine that 20% or less uh, concentration of L-ascorbic acid would be ideal. Also, theoretically, adding ferulic acid stabilizes the, vol um, the vitamin C even further. So most uh, vitamin C serums are somewhere in the ballpark of 20% or less um, L-ascorbic acid uh, with um, with a ferulic acid, but hopefully you can hear what I'm saying here and that there's really just no evidence for using these, um, these cosmetic serums that you know claim to have vitamin C and every single one will tell you that they have the best one and they have the right one. One of the reasons that I feel so strongly that vitamin C serums are a waste of time, at least for me and my skincare routine, is that vitamin C serums are, you know, non-drug cosmetics. They're very expensive. I've told you all of these limitations and the paucity of data for their use. Um, so that in and of itself is kind of like skip it to me. But the fact that, you know, these vitamin C serums are non-drug cosmetics. They don't undergo any regulation to demonstrate you know, efficacy and manufacturers can tell you whatever they so choose. Uh, their claims are not regulated in the same way as, as say, you know, a drug, for example. So they may tell you that they have the best vitamin C and it's stabilized in a magical serum form or an elixir form or an essence form or whatever. Okay, <laughs> it's sort of a big gamble. You know, it's kind of like to me, um, who I can't, I'm blanking on his name. There's sort of a controversial um, budget uh, guy on YouTube and he has like a radio talk show. I cannot think of his name. Um, but he gives advice essentially on how, how to pay off your debt. Okay, that's his whole thing. He teaches people how to, um, you know, lifestyle things that they should do to pay off debt. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, does it surprise you that you go to his channel and he doesn't have a video on, um, you know, these are the these are the lottery tickets you should buy to, to, to get rich and pay off debt, okay? And the reason he doesn't have those is because that's really an unlikely way to pay off debt, okay? But taking everything into consideration that we know about about the odds of winning the lottery, okay? It, you're unlikely to, to get yourself out of debt by buying lottery tickets, okay? So it's not surprising that that gentleman doesn't have a video. I mean, maybe he does. I, I haven't spent much time on it uh, looking, but um, he doesn't have a video or a talk series about these are the, the my top five lottery tickets and, and Powerballs that you should invest in to pay off debt because that it you know that's highly unlikely to work, um, and that's how I feel about vitamin C serum. You know, vitamin C serum for um, skin cancer prevention, anti aging. All the evidence for the for what you should be doing for that is sunscreen use and sun protection use. And the vitamin C serum to me is is really just like going out and buying lottery tickets. Um, when a better investment in an in anti-aging routine and a skincare health and skin cancer prevention routine for me and what I would advocate to you is sun protection. <laughs> All of these things are the end result of excessive ultraviolet light exposure, okay? So Check out my sunscreen Q&A videos because I know there's a lot of controversy that circulates about sunscreen and I address safety issues. You know, I also have a video on sunscreen use and vitamin D and you know, so I know that that generates a lot of other questions. So make sure you check those out if you're at all interested. But for me, I, you know, my skincare approach is very minimalistic and it's focused on things that, uh, you know, can be helpful for skin, which are not neglecting moisturizers and sun protection, you know? I mean, that is really where I think that the focus should be in your skincare routine is keeping it simple, keeping it something something that you can maintain, something that is affordable um, and has good evidence for doing it, not just, um, you know, some expensive next best thing serum. And that's really how I feel about vitamin C serum, period. It doesn't matter to me the 
the brand of the vitamin C serum, you know, the uh, the maker, I don't care if it is timeless, I don't care if it's SkinCeuticals, I don't care if it's Mad Hippie, I don't care if it's, you know, one that you bought in a dermatologist's office. To me, they're, they're non-drug cosmetics and it doesn't matter. I could make a hundred videos each with a different product and I would say the exact same thing in every single video. So hopefully this video captures my attitude towards vitamin C serums, why I don't waste time on them, um, because I just don't feel like the evidence is there to support their use. They're expensive, even the affordable ones are expensive. They detract from, they detract your attention from really what matters, which is sun protection and I don't know, your life. Um, so save your money. That's my my thinking behind them and call me a cynic but if you were you know I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if there isn't you know like a water tower in Los Angeles filled with a vat of 20% vitamin C stabilized with ferulic acid at the appropriate theoretically appropriate pH and People just go and aliquot into bottles and put their label on it and sell it to you as their own, okay? I would not be the least bit surprised if that's how it actually occurs. I I have no idea, but I'm a little bit, you know, of a cynic at heart at times, and uh, that would not surprise me in the least bit that there's probably not a huge, it wouldn't surprise me that there's probably not a, a huge difference between vitamin C serums. So if you want to give one a whirl, I would always say go for one that's inexpensive, um, you know, given the likelihood of it doing anything, and drop it if you can't afford it. It's not necessary. And, you know, focus on what matters, yourself and sun protection. So that's my, you know, little spiel about vitamin C serums, why I don't waste time on them. <laughs> um, and, you know, if you're using one and you like it and you notice a brightening effect and you notice benefit from it, that's awesome. I'm not saying it's not possible. Um, I'm just not going to, you know, I just don't see a need for it in my skincare routine. And I wouldn't tell anyone to go out and buy them because the evidence just really isn't there for that. So, you know, I'm not dissing, dissing on anybody or, you know, dismissing anybody's observations that they have one that they like and that they see benefit from and that their skin is improved. That's fantastic. I'm not saying it's not possible. I just can't objectively determine that in any way, okay? Um, so if you're using one, you like it, and it's not like breaking the bank, but more power to you, keep using it. But for me and, and you know my platform and reviewing things here, I'm never gonna tell people that they should buy these because the evidence just really isn't there. I guess I shouldn't say never, you know, if we get more evidence or, you know, bigger studies come out, then I would definitely push it, you know, if there was a, you know, rigorous support for it, but there's really not, so I don't know. I just, I would just skip it. Focus on sun protection. That's where the money's at, guys. That's really where the money's at. That's where all the data is. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was informative and uh, you see a little bit about why I don't have videos on vitamin C serum reviews. But yeah, I'm just going to finish off my Totoro tea here. Oh, so good. But depending on what time you guys are watching this, I hope you're having or had a fantastic day. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my hair down and get my Bastello in so I can be human again. <laughs> and um, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.